Okay, now let's take a look at a couple more hook functions. Let's go ahead and remove this breakpoint and add it to hook menu so we can take a look at how hook menu gets called. I'm going to go ahead and make sure that our menu is being rebuilt and I can do that by going to configuration, development, performance and clicking on clear all caches. Now if you remember from a previous video, the reason we have to do this is that in order to improve performance so that Drupal doesn't have to run hook menu for every function on every page load, it generates a table that includes a registry of all of the paths that have been registered through hook menu, and it uses that instead. So if we want to run hook menu again, we need to rebuild that registry, and we can do that by clearing the cache or by installing or uninstalling a module. So let's go ahead and click the clear all caches button and then jump back to our editor. Okay, so we're stopped here in the middle of our trails underscore menu. Let's go ahead and look at the call stack tab. Now if we look, our call stack is a little bit longer because we're just even a little further down the line in the Drupal execution process. So if we take one step of the call stack, we see a call to call user func. Now in the previous examples of hooks, they called call user func array. And the only difference between these two functions is that call user func takes a list of parameters. So one parameter, another parameter, then another parameter. Whereas call user func array takes the first parameter as the name of the function. And then an array which contains all the parameters or arguments to pass to that function. So it's basically the same thing, just a slightly different syntax. Let's go ahead and step one more step up to menu inc line 2,562, and we see here a pretty similar implementation of the for each loop that executes hooks that have been defined by the various modules in a Drupal installation. So if we look here, it's for each module implements menu, and module implements again will check to see what modules implement this particular hook. So they look for the module name underscore and then the name of the hook. And then it loops through each of those. And then it calls that function by simply taking the module name and appending underscore menu to it and running that. And then it goes through and deals with the data that gets returned by it. So you can see that all of these implementations are very similar. They boil down to gathering a list of the modules that define a particular hook and then executing them in a loop. Uh, let's take a look at one more here. I'm going to remove the breakpoint here in hook menu and we'll go ahead and do hook cron. Okay, in order to execute cron, we have to go to cron.php. Now this hook is called whenever cron runs. If you're unfamiliar with cron, it's a script that runs at regularly scheduled intervals or during a cron run. And this script takes care of things like creating the search index and when there's emails to be sent out for particular modules, it will go through and send out a group of those. So if we want something to be executed at particular intervals, we can go ahead and add that code into this hook. And I'll show you an example of that as we go through this demonstration. So in order to execute this, we need to go to cron.php. But starting in Drupal 7, there's a token that's required at the end of the URL in order for it to process. We can get that by going to reports and status report. On this page, down here you see cron maintenance tasks, and there's a link to run cron manually, which is what we want to do. Or we can also set up cron on our server to execute this script right here. Let's go ahead and click this run cron manually. Let's go back to our editor. We see we've stopped here in the middle of our trails cron function. Let's look at the call stack. So we have a predictable trail here. We have a call user func array. 
and then before that is a module invoke all, which is the same function that we saw with hook init. And then before that, we have Drupal cron run. So let's go ahead and jump to there. So again, this is just a single line that implements a hook across all modules. All, there, all it is is module invoke all and then the name of the hook. 